That is the shiz night. My favorite genre of video on YouTube is the ones where people discuss lost media. Missing episodes of cartoons or scrapped levels from video games are so cool to me, but I find it so interesting when figures or plushes find their way into the lost media realm as well. What's so cool about these is that it means there was or may still be versions of collectibles we all own that we just can't have. Sometimes these are kept by executives, other times these things just get thrown out. I remember hearing one time someone found a prototype Zelda action figure at a thrift store of all places. Sonic is no stranger to lost or mysterious plushes and figures. The highly desired joyride figures made of rubber were once supposed to be articulated as shown in this prototype picture. I consider anyone who actually owns prototypes or mysterious collectibles very lucky people. I just never would have imagined I would also be one of those people. I'm about to show you all a product that has never surfaced online and no one has known about until now. Today we'll be looking at my one of a kind, incredibly rare, Northwest Company Sonic the Hedgehog plush and blanket set. Before I can even get into this plush and the story of how I obtained it, I think we need to go over the history of it first. I wouldn't be surprised if you all didn't know of the Northwest Company. To be honest, I don't even know what they do. But what I do know is, in spring of 2012, they made a plush and blanket set based on Sonic the Hedgehog. Included was a classic styled Sonic plush, standing around 12 to 14 inches tall, and a black blanket with classic Sonic art on it. While I used to own this set, I sold it off many years ago. This set could be found in FYE shops, and remember that detail, because we'll be getting back to that. Anyways, a lot of people who own this set may realize that they have the exact same thing, except their blanket is blue. That's also very common. In 2013, the plush and blanket set got re-released with a slightly different Sonic plush and the same blanket, only this time in a light blue. So just to get a timeline, there are two versions of this set. A 2012 release with a black blanket, and a 2013 re-release with a blue blanket and a slightly different Sonic plush. Seeing as how in 2013 they redesigned the plush, this is where things may get interesting. Okay, now here's a short story time. I have a friend named Justin. We've been friends since we were kids and collect all sorts of things together. His dad helps us out too, because he is the guy who helps ship things to different warehouses. He helps the most with the company FYE, and has for years. Because he's been with the company for so long, every now and then he is given a box of items for free and gets to take them home. That alone is really cool. Ever since this exchange began, Justin has always helped me out. If there was anything Sonic related in those boxes, he'd call me up and give them to me. This is actually how I obtained so many of those keychains and GE plushes years and years ago. Now if we turn back the clock, one time him and I walked to his house after school and he was going through a new box and gave me this. This strange looking Sonic plush with a blanket. Now, while I am grateful he gave this to me, at the same time, my interest in Sonic was kind of fading around 2013, not to mention I already had the original Northwest Company plush and blanket set. So I thanked him and then packed the plush away for years and never really displayed him, and eventually I gave the set to my girlfriend, and for years, I forgot all about the plush. But once I started to get back into collecting around 2015, or most likely 2016, I tried finding pictures of this plush on eBay or Google, and for the life of me, I couldn't find anything. So I explained the situation to my girlfriend, and she gave the set back to me, so I could try and find any information on this. After posting on Facebook groups, Sonic Gear, and Twitter, apparently no one has ever seen this plush before. Ever. Once looking at the plush, I noticed while the blanket has a touch tag, the actual plush does not. Now, this right away could be the sign of a bootleg, but before anyone even suggests that, let's think for a second. First off, this plush, despite having a strange design, is constructed way too well to be a bootleg. It has nice stitching, so that's a sign that this was made with care. Second, 
When it comes to designing prototypes for plushes, I have heard that usually companies either use an old touch tag, or sometimes don't even make one at all. In this case specifically, why would they? If this plush was just made to show off to a Sega marketing executive to get the approval to make more, they wouldn't need to make a touch tag or an actual tag, seeing as how in 2012, the company had already proven they can be trusted with the Sonic license and have produced things before. So let's get back to that timeline, and I'm going to share a theory I got here. In 2012, the Northwest Company makes a Sonic plush and blanket set. The plush is light blue and based on the Japanese design of classic Sonic, used most recently in Sonic Generations. In late 2012 or early 2013, the company decides they want to re-release the plush and blanket set and change the design. They decide they want to make a blue blanket and use the western design of Classic Sonic as opposed to the Japanese design. They create a mock-up but don't have the blue blanket yet. In 2013, the set is officially re-released with a blue blanket and an altered version of the 2012 plush, and the early 2013 plush is scrapped altogether. But why? Well, this is just a theory, but I like to imagine this. Sega just made Sonic Generations, and now Classic Sonic is back and being thrown into a lot of merchandise. To strengthen the look of the brand, it's usually best to stick to one design of a character. Hence why since Sonic Unleashed, Modern Sonic's model hasn't changed a whole lot. It's a standard design. When Sega's marketing division was approached by Northwest with a new plush design based on the Western design of Classic Sonic, Sega probably denied the design, as up to that point, Classic Sonic was depicted as light blue and sporting his Japanese design. They didn't want to have two Classic Sonics, that would already add more confusion to the two Sonics in their latest game. So instead of using this darker blue, Western design Sonic, they probably just asked the Northwest company to just alter the original plush to look more accurate. And so they did. So this begs the question, how do I have this? Well. Let's not forget that a lot of times, prototypes are either destroyed, kept, or thrown around a couple times after a final design is made. Let's think for a second to this classic Sonic plush made by Tomy. As we all know, Tomy made this plush in 2017, and it's great. But in prototype pictures, the plush was depicted as dark blue instead of the finalized light blue. Production probably began on the dark blue version, but was rectified by a light blue version. For a while, a seller from Hong Kong was selling multiple versions of the dark blue plush, and while Hong Kong is a place of bootlegs, that's also a place where a lot of official merchandise is made. And this may be weird, but I'm just going to throw in a video made by a user named PatMac, who bought a prototype Big the Cat plush made by Jazzwares that was never released. In this video, he stated that it was just sitting in a warehouse. Same with the dark blue classic Sonic by Tomy, and more than likely, same with this plush. If my friend's dad gets boxes shipped from warehouses, and he has to sort them, and then sometimes he is given one for free, my theory is this plush was stored in a warehouse and was accidentally put in the wrong box and shipped out, somehow landing in a warehouse close to me, and as fate would have it, almost sent to my local FYE store. But, as fate would have it, this plush was in a box of a thousand that my friend's dad got to keep. My friend opened it and gave it to me. It is truly amazing how things happen sometimes. With this plush in hand, you can clearly see it's based on the classic western design of Classic Sonic, with the more oval-shaped belly and the darker blue, and with the whole flat spike thing going on, much like earlier plushes from the 90s era. The colors on this plush are very dark, with a darker blue which is accurate to the western design, but having dark red almost maroon shoes as opposed to bright red. The plush has no finger detail and instead has just gloves, and his spike design is really unique and abstract. Not to mention the plush's tail is actually rather long and flat. I have to say they kind of missed the mark on the design of the mouth, it doesn't go all the way down to his neck, and his nose is actually rather large. All his details are stitched in rather than using iron-on transfers or plastic beads, and the material is incredibly soft and feels nice. Well everyone, I know I said a lot in this video, but I hope it all makes some amount of sense. 
I don't think I'll ever get the closure of knowing the true story of how this plush came to be, but I can't believe that for all these years I've had a one-of-a-kind prototype and only recently realized its worth. I'd like to thank users such as Pat Mac and L Supersonic Q for making videos on subjects like these that go so in-depth on these topics. Without their help, through entertainment no less, I don't know if I'd ever have realized what this plush was. So everyone, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you all again soon. Take care.